Hi guys, Yuki here, back with Seduce Me on Matthew's route. Um, we're going to a close, we're coming to a close for Matthew's route. Um, it's most likely going to be the same route, like, the same choices, um, but, like, at least we're going to move on to, like, something new afterwards, like, maybe Andrew's and, like, the Naomi and Suzu's and anything else that needs to be completed. <laughs> But, yeah, I guess let's just get this going. And... Oh, and then um, I just wanted to mention that, yes, I will be posting the alternate, like, endings to all of them. But I don't know if I'll be voicing over them or anything like that. Just, maybe just post up the video and people can just read. I don't know. Anyways, uh... I know you're here. Where are you? I could only, I could feel myself growl. It wasn't a matter of fear that she'd take away the voice anymore. Her very existence had a little fire of rage within my gut, which only grew as each day went by. The speed was getting on my nerves, and I knew it would not end well for one of us. I wasn't going to lose to that demon bitch. Leave me alone. Huh? My heart stopped. Diana was with Matthew. My mind flew into slow motion, playing with fake images of Diana trying to seduce Matthew in my head to further fan the angry flame inside of me. I instinctively followed Matthew's voice. I was approaching the grand lobby and followed the commotion in the dining room. The sound was echoing from the kitchen, so I peeked inside while hiding around the corner. I almost growled at the sight. Matthew was holding on one side of the kitchen's island counter, with Diana holding the other side, looking to him with a smirk. Oh, come on, Matthew. Don't you like games? A game of tag sounds so fun. Not with you. Now go away! Ah, oh, I'm hurt. Wounded, truly. Did I go too far? You went too far when you came here and attacked her! Pity. And here I thought I was going to offer you the chance to become something better than just a simple incubus. What was Diana going on about? More than just an incubus, she was insane. How about becoming the next demon lord? I froze. What did she mean? Becoming the next demon lord? The boys weren't in the demon world anymore. They had no claim to the throne anymore. Matthew stared at Diana with, with what blah blah blah, which makes me worry. The next demon lord? Well, currently... I'm the contracted bride to the heir to the throne. Since the throne is open, it's available to any son of the Demon Lord's line. Think about it. You'll gain the throne, the land, and a bride to continue your lineage with. Doesn't that sound like a perfect life for an incubus like you? You'll show your father and mother how grown up you are. That you're not just some little cute boy people can take for granted. I could feel myself gripping my fist tightly in anger. How dare this girl try to convince Matthew to return to the demon world. He ran away from it. He didn't want to go back. He shouldn't go back. My mind began to wander, imagining him saying yes. He would leave, and the brothers would follow to bring him back. They'd be tracked because Diana would make sure they could never leave. Matthew would be the new demon lord and with Diana as his queen, and I'd lose him. Like I would believe you. You don't need to believe me, Matthew. You just need to come back home with me. I promise, you'll be respected as you were supposed to be. I'm not falling for it! I think a better, uh, what's the word, bargain would be, like, for his mom to be happy. Or, like, to finally get, like, or for all the mothers to get, like, back their body and not just be, like, little floating spirit things. Because he holds no interest for Diana. I don't think any of the incubis do. Fall for what? The truth? The truth is that your brothers still treat you like a child, even though the demon world is far behind you. The truth is that your little human love affair is fleeting. She can never see you as a man, just as a little boy who wants to grow up. Stop it! I stared as Matthew chucked a handful of knives at Diana. 
Dang, who ducked and dodged them with ease. They dug themselves into the tile wall before fading away as if they didn't exist. There's a whole side of you I've never seen before, Matthew. You dare attack me? I'm not going back, and that is final! I could see Matthew's muscles tense and flex, wanting to attack Diana. The girl in question, however, took a deep breath and looked at Matthew with a pleading look. You won't even return to your mother. She's been crying ever since you left. How dare you? Do not bring her into this! Matthew glared at Diana as Diana circled the island towards him. She begged me to bring you back. She wants you to get what you deserve. The throne. I don't believe you! Matthew then walked away from Diana, heading to the fridge to start dinner, as if she wasn't there. Diana stopped and leaned against the counter. She'll never love you, you know. I don't mind. I care for her. <laughs> the human girl? You must be joking. A human like her can't possibly provide you what you need. She is a human. You're a demon. I felt the urge to storm in and shut her mouth. It would give away my position, but I was growing extremely tired of Diana. Barge in and let set her straight. I decided to be assertive and quickly stepped into the room, rushing to the front to be in front of Matthew. Diana and Matthew looked at me in surprise as I glared daggers at Diana. Get out. Well, well, little human. You're awfully nosy in business that doesn't concern you. It does concern me. Does it? I don't think a human would understand the importance of this affair. You're asking him to leave to be someone he doesn't want to be. That's not going to happen. Oh? And what makes you so sure about that? I love him. Diana, I almost had a misclick there. That was scary. Diana stared in shock at my exclamation. Was it not what she expected? I didn't care what she expected. I wasn't going to lose the man I had going to love. You love him? Yes, I love him. Diana's lips twitched, the edges curling into an amused smirk as she stared at me. So what? A human's love isn't enough to understand the situation. A demon can never reciprocate human feeling. To both of our surprise, however, Matthew stepped forward and put an arm around me, pulling me close to his body. I love her! I saw the confidence Diana had shattered in her eyes as she stared at Matthew at his words. I could see the struggle in her face to try and find some weakness in Matthew. In me. Anything. A demon love a human? Impossible! You heard me. I love her, Diana. I'd do anything for her. And she cares for me more than anyone in the Abyssal Plane ever had. More than you'll ever know. She makes me feel like the adult I'm supposed to be. Whoa. And there's nothing you can do to change that. Ever. Diana took a step back, physically feeling the sting of Matthew's words in her chest. She had lost. I could see it in her eyes. Diana's eyes grew dull as she glared at me and Matthew. It seemed almost uncharacteristic of her. Yet it was something I wasn't surprised to see come from her face. Very well. Fine. Valet. And with that, Diana faded into the ground in a purple pentagram, crossing her arms in an almost looking upset. Matthew and I were then left alone, left in the silence of the room. I finally let out the air I was unconsciously holding in my chest, relaxing from the ordeal. Matthew stepped to me and held me gently, surprising me. Are you all right? I nodded in response, unable to speak so immediately after being surprised. Matthew let out a sigh, relaxing in the embrace. I gently placed my hands around him, returning the embrace slightly. I could hear Matthew's heartbeat. He held me close in his arms, and I felt safe beyond words. Are you okay? Of course I'm okay. I'm holding you. Oh, you're gonna make me melt. I looked up at Matthew, surprised at what he said. Matthew blushed, moving a strand of my hair from my face to look down at me. You mean so much to me. You make me feel like more than just a kid. I've never felt this happy before with anyone, and here you are giving me every reason to love you. I love you so friggin' much. I stared wide-eyed, blushing like a maniac. Was this real? 
No way, this couldn't be real. Was Matthew confessing to me? Confessing his love for me? Matthew gently caressed my cheek, staring into my eyes with a loving, almost hopeful expression. The warmth of his hand invited me to nuzzle onto it, closing my eyes. This wasn't a dream. My heart was pounding hard enough where I was sure Matthew could hear it. Matthew gently leaned in, closing his eyes. He stopped, however, remaining just a mere torturous inch away from my lips. He wanted me to show my feelings for him. He had left himself open for me to kiss him or leave him empty. The power I had was unbelievable. Kiss him. I loved him and wanted to give him exactly what he wanted. I gently leaned in, letting my lips finally touch his gingerly. Matthew let out almost a surprised gasp, almost against my lips before wrapping both of his arms around my waist, pulling me close to him. I moved my arms up and around his neck, feeling the kiss between us deepen to a heated height. My chest was pounding, making me feel empty fireworks in my mind. Matthew was everything I desired. He was the man I wanted, demon or not. It was all so supernatural to fall in love with someone so quickly. Maybe it was a sense of magic I was thrown into. Maybe it was Cupid playing with my heart. Either way, I found myself melting at the thought of him being with me. I found myself combing my fingers through Matthew's hair, making the man holding me softly tremble at my touch. He gently nibbled on my lower lip, asking me to deepen the kiss between us even further. I easily teased him before finally opening my mouth slightly for him. His tongue gently danced with mine as one of his hands slid up on my back and cradled my head. He gently leaned my body back, making me cling to him as the heat of our kiss rose higher and higher. Gently, though, Matthew slowed the kiss down and pulled away, staring down at me. His eyes burned for me, wanting me to melt and buckle in his arms. I could feel myself melt already. Matthew opened his mouth to speak, but a very small blush ran across his cheeks. He was reduced, he was reduced to a shy silence. I stared as he tried to find the words to say in my eyes. I knew exactly what he wanted. He didn't need energy, though, right? Are you... No, I just... I stared wide, feeling a blush on my cheeks grow. He didn't say anything more, but I knew what words would have followed if he continued. He wanted me. I was stunned. Was I that appealing to him? Was his passion really that deep for me? Matthew gently nuzzled my forehead, losing the blush and finally being able to speak. If you don't want to, we don't have to. I mean, it, it, it's up to you. I could feel my mind go numb and purr at the idea. The moment was an incubus. He was a demon of sex, the purest form of lust and desire. My world would rock, and I would enjoy every second of it. At the same time, I was indeed inexperienced. Diana wasn't wrong when she claimed to me to be innocent. Did I want to give that innocence to him, especially this early? I found myself forgetting the words yes and no. What could I say to him? I knew then that I wanted what I wanted, but how to say it without breaking the moment? Hold me. I wasn't ready, uh, but I still wanted to give him the love he wanted. Holding me close was all I needed. All I wanted. Part of me grew fearful of what Matthew would think. Would he hate me? Would he regret giving me his love? So many stories ended when sex wasn't given, and I didn't want the story to end. Matthew, however, smiled and caressed my cheek happily in response, nodding in understanding. I could tell that he was okay with my decision, which made my heart flutter in joy. Matthew gently leaned in and kissed my lips once again, wanting both of us to cool down from our passionate high. I kissed him back sweetly, feeling the heat in my chest die out peacefully. Matthew pulled away slowly, looking into my eyes to reveal a deep love that haunted his blue irises. Alright, let's get you back to bed. Matthew then wrapped an arm around my shoulders and lowered his other arm underneath. I easily held on to him as he lifted me up like a blushing bride and carried me out of the room and back towards my room. Matthew was kind enough to know my limits, and I trusted him to respect my choice. He wouldn't enthrall me to go against my wishes, or nor would he force himself on me. He was perfect. Matthew gently lowered his... Thank you. There's always interruptions. Matthew gently lowered me back to my bed before petting my head with a loving smile. I was dreaming in the happiness. I didn't want it to end. As Matthew turned to leave, I sleepily grabbed his arm. Wait! Matthew froze and looked back at me, awaiting my next command. He was going to obey no matter what I said, but he was anticipating what I was going to ask. I could see it in his eyes. 
Clover, I just wanted him to be with me a little longer. I didn't want to rest alone. Hold me. I repeated my words, holding another meaning to those two words. Was he okay with what I wanted? It was so close to what he asked for, but it wasn't going beyond what I desired. Matthew took in my words and smiled, nodding before turning back to me and sliding into bed with me. I was surprised, but I happily melted into Matthew's arms as they wrapped themselves around my body. I rested my head against Matthew's chest, enjoying the warmth it provided as I closed my eyes. He truly loved me as I loved him. My rest with him was as peaceful as it could be, the best sleep I had in years, years, days. When I opened my eyes, I felt Matthew still holding me, but he had fallen asleep. His sleeping face made me giggle softly, but the reality of the situation made my heart flutter. I couldn't believe it. I was lying next to a man I had grown to love with all of my heart. His warm embrace made me feel safe, and as the tender moment we just shared replayed in my head, I couldn't help but smile and snuggle into his chest further. Unconsciously, he held me tighter to his body, giving me more of his warmth. I didn't want to move, but then my core suddenly tightened and made me sit up without waking the man next to me. I felt my legs move and bring me to my balcony window, where I opened the glass and stepped out onto the patio. I stared wide at Diana, who sat cross-legged on the railing of my balcony, with her glowing red-eyed stare upon me. I opened my mouth to object, but Diana stopped me. Before you get all huffy, I didn't come here to take your precious man away. I will admit, though, I'm shocked that you didn't give your innocence to him. We demons are the best lovers, you know. I glared. What do you want, Diana? Well, I just wanted to see how you truly feel. You know, without him around to influence you. What are you talking about? I'm giving you an opportunity to come clean about these feelings of yours and to give you your salvation. What was Diana up to? This was beyond crazy. Nothing she had done made any sense. Why was I still alive at this rate? What's keeping you from killing me and taking them? <laughs> you are not worth my time. Not worth your time? What, are you afraid of something? Afraid something might happen? All at once, I felt my body being lifted into the air, moved over past the railings, leaving me with nothing but the ground below to threaten me with a collision death. Oh, trust me, dear. I'm not afraid to kill you. I can drop you right now and leave your body to rot until the morning, when the boys would find you. I wanted to speak, but the thought of her letting go and letting me fall to my death scared my voice into silence. Diana then chuckled and wheeled my body back onto the balcony, setting me down gently. Alas, if I kill you, then the boys would never come with me willingly back to the demon world, and then I'd have to chase them all around the world, or kill them and drag them back. But then their father wouldn't be happy, and blah blah blah. Too much work. Diana seemed very business-oriented, as if the boys were cargo more than men. It irked me, but she smiled. I'm giving you one chance to denounce your love for the demon in your bed, and let me take him and the other boys back to the demon world. And why, may I ask, would I do that? There are so many reasons why, actually. There's the reason that he's a demon and you're a human, so you two can never truly have a happily ever after. Then there's the reason that demons truly do not know how to love, despite what he may proclaim. The list goes on and on. The point is, if you give me the boys, I will promise you eternal happiness. Eternal happiness? That's right. I have the power to give you anything you desire. Power. Men. Women. Money. Fame. Name it, and it's yours. A demon never goes back on their word, and I have the power to obtain anything you wish. Our deal is our contract. I could only stare in shock. This was a dream. It had to be. However, Diana smiled an almost genuine smile at me, shaking the reality of the situation. She would never smile like that. Don't you wish to be free of your destiny? Your father constantly berating you to become the next CEO of your grandfather's company. How would you? I was almost bored and surprised. How did Diana know all of this? She was a succubus, yes, but how could she know anything beyond sexual desire? She wasn't Damien. 
Diana chuckled and leaned back against her arm. Just because I play with hearts and sex doesn't mean I don't know my way around the human mind. You happen to be an open book of information, but I digress. I can give you your freedom with ease. It'll be like you were always meant to have it. All I ask is that you hand over the boys. What do you say? Was I seriously being given this choice? The man I love for anything I wanted? A demon like Diana was powerful enough, yes, but did I even want to consider giving up the man I loved? No. She must have been crazier than I thought, I glared. Absolutely not. Diana sighed and stood up onto the railing. What I wasn't expecting was her look to look me up in the air. I tried to scream, but my voice suddenly became lost in silence. What was Diana doing? Diana made me float over to her, and she smirked as we touched noses. Well, if I can't return home with the boys, I might as well return home with the power to fight back. Diana finally leaned in and kissed me. I shut my eyes, feeling me to bite her lips, but finding no muscle in my face listening to my mental commands. What did she do to me? I didn't want to enjoy it, but every single nerve in my body was flaring in excitement and pleasure as she kissed me. I felt my energy drain slowly, but forcefully from my body. Was she using her magic to force energy out of my body? It seemed like forever, but finally, Diana pulled away from the kiss with a smile and looked over her lips. She lowered me back onto the patio and chuckled. For some reason, even though nothing seemed to have changed, she looked stronger, powerful. It was almost like looking at a new Diana. Diana then stepped back off the railing, making me catch my breath in my throat. As she took another step away from me, she looked to be simply walking in the night air. Diana smirked at my sudden surprise. May you never regret your choice, human. If you do, I'll happily come and take it away. With a flick of her hair, Diana turned and walked away into the night, fading into the darkness like a shadow. I watched her fade away before looking back to the man in my bed. Did I make the right choice? My heart gave a gentle thump, giving me my answer. I did, and I will never regret it for as long as I live. I walked back inside and gently crawled back into bed within the embrace of the safest arms I knew. I snuggled close to the warmth before closing my eyes. I was happy. The rest of the story can almost be passed over. With Diana gone, my life returned to normal with school and my friends not remembering what had happened. It was as if magi magic never even appeared in my world. One thing was for certain, however. Matthew loved me, and I loved him just as much. We had promised our lives to each other, and nothing was going to take that away from us. Not even time itself. Our love was so powerful, it practically overwhelmed me with joy every time I found him holding me close every morning. To think, a demon in love with a human like me. It was unthinkable, unbelievable, it was practically impossible. But it was true. The other boys decided to leave of their own accord. They knew that my future would only need Matthew at my side, so they decided to start their own lives in the human world. Matthew understood perfectly, wishing his brothers the best. Besides, Matthew had proven to be a man of finding someone to care for. His brothers didn't need to worry about him now that he was caring for me. I felt bad as well for being closer to Matthew than the others, but they reassured me that I was okay, that they would remain nearby so if I ever needed them. I was happy for them. They made, my pro they made me promise, however, that I would love Matthew for as long as we lived. That promise was instantly given. But what of my future? Well, it kind of made... It, it was kind of made for me. Before I graduated, James decided to step into the light of the Anderson Toys Company, and with the help of his demon powers and leadership charisma, he managed to influence not only the entire board, but my father as well to letting him run the, for CEO. I was beyond shocked. How James managed to do all of that was beyond me, but when the vote was called, James had taken over the company I was destined to have. He vowed to respect the wishes of the late CEO and help the company become an even grander company. For a demon, it was simply a make it was simple to make a company grand. My grandfather would have been proud to see how James had helped it shine. With the CEO position filled, my father had no choice but to let me decide my future, which made me happy beyond belief. Compare. No longer would I have the future scare me into a corner. I could choose my life on my own. That being said, I was still scared of where the future was going to take me. What do I want to do? 
Did I want to help James build a company? Did I want to venture off on my own? Matthew reassured me that he would support me and help me through whatever I needed to do, what I decided to do. I was grateful and would never forget that promise. I was happy and nothing could shake me from, down from that happiness. Eh. One afternoon, a good couple of years after the boys and I had met, I had a moment to myself. So I wandered my house and took in all that had happened as if it were all a dream. The demons, the devils, the magic, it was all surreal to believe. It almost frightened me to think that it could have been all a dream. But the warm feeling in my heart reminded me that it was all real. The demons, the magic, the love I had, all real. I smiled as I held my hands to my chest, relishing the feelings dancing through my soul. I let out a happy sigh before looking up and seeing where I had wandered to. I realized that I was standing in the dining room. I stopped at the smell of baked goods. Taking a gigantic whiff, I let the smell of sugar and sweets fill my senses. Hmm. Matthew must be baking again. I tiptoed and peeked into the kitchen, wanting to know what he was making. Almost done. I watched as Matthew started to decorate an already wonderful-looking cake with blue and white frosting. It looked delicious. I was practically salivating. Clever, as I watched him, I smiled. He looked so concentrated in his work. It was adorable. And there! Perfect! Matthew stepped back from the cake, allowing me to see his masterpiece. It in indeed was perfect. I wanted to taste, and soon... That looks amazing, Matthew! What? Matthew quickly turned to me in surprise, trying to hide the cake as I laughed. Well, well, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not done! I, I mean... Matthew. I walked over and smiled, giving him a kiss before walking around him to, ta to look at the cake. Closer, it looks all more scrumptious. What is this for? Uh, well, I mean, it's for something pretty important. I looked to Matthew, raising an eyebrow as he watched an arm. He watched. I can't read. I looked to Matthew, raising an eyebrow as he wrapped an arm around my waist. What is it for? Guess. I'll give you three chances. Or what? What if I don't get it right? Then the cake is all mine. Hey, no fair. Instinctively, I wanted to pull away, but Matthew laughed and dabbed some whipped cream on my nose from a nearby decorating spatula. It's totally fair. Now just guess. Hmm, is it your birthday? Matthew shook his head. Nope. Second guess. Is it an anniversary? Matthew nodded, but before I could cheer, Matthew rotated his hand, gesturing me to continue. Anniversary of? I puffed my cheeks. I could memorize facts and lessons, but dates were bad. It was like asking a girly girl when her boyfriend's frat party was. Matthew laughed before kissing my cheek, making my puffed cheeks deflate. It's the anniversary of when we first met. I had practically forgotten. He was right. It had been a couple of years since I moved in and met Matthew with his brothers. He threw a party last year for it. How could I have forgotten? Time definitely flew. Matthew. Matthew smiled at me, making my heart flutter and squee once again. I want to celebrate it every year in a different way. Next year will be something extraordinary. For now, though, this cake will do. I quickly pulled Matthew's head down with my hand and kissed him sweetly, wanting to show my appreciation with a kiss. He stared at me as if his greatest wish had come true. I fought back a giggle at the sight. Matthew gently pulled me in to him, hugging me to his chest. I nuzzled into Matthew's chest, hearing his gentle heartbeat and memorizing his tempo. I love you. I love you, too. Before I could finish, suddenly the cake, which had been sitting silently and peacefully on the counter, exploded into a giant mess on it. Matthew, luckily, was quick enough to pull us back before we got hit with the flying cake pieces. What the? I looked at the cake to see a very mischievous little creature standing over the cake, triumphant at what he had, what it had done. I began to laugh as Matthew grew red-faced. Simon Tabby!
I quickly rushed over and grabbed Simon, who made a squeak noise in my hands. I was still giggling as Matthew came over and glared daggers at the white doll covered in cake. To calm Matthew down, however, I stretched up on my toes and kissed him softly on the lips. That's cute. They got cake all over their face. Matthew stared, but kissed back, not wanting to let me go without a kiss of my own. I love you, Matthew. Matthew sighed before smiling at me, finally calm. I love you, too. I didn't want to wake up if this was indeed a dream. I felt light as a feather, not wanting to ever let go of this man in my life. There was no words that could describe the emotions within me. I felt joy, happiness, ecstatic, high all at once. Here I was with the man I would be with forever, with a cake I would delight in, even in pieces. Cute. I had gained the heart of a demon, no, of a man I loved. I vowed to cherish him and love him for the remainder of my days and beyond. Could a demon love a human forever? I knew Matthew would. And that was my happily ever after. And Matthew's cake. And... So cute! We finally finished all of the guys! Yay! So now we're gonna move on to one of the girls or we could uh, move on to Andrew or just the regular mm, non-romanceable route. Anyways, Oh, I'll, 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 we'll see what comes next. Um, mm, let, let's finish up the guys' route. So we're going on with Andrews. That's probably only only gonna take like maybe one video, or yeah, not video, but you know what I mean, like one part. It's only gonna take like a part. Just skim, skip past all of the guy choices and get onto that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye! Wait, 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 wait. I just unlocked a new password. Yes! I'm so excited. Alright, let's, let's, let's see how this works, Demon War. I'm excited! And I'm probably going to have the cut part here because, you know, what I said before about um, my computer not being able to play um, the ending. But yeah, this is so exciting! Oh man, this is a surprise. <laughs> alright, alright, let's go into the bonus. excited this might be spoilers so yeah um hopefully it doesn't spoil anything but if it does I'm sorry it has been two years since he passed away my visits to his grave became fewer as time went on but no one could tell me that I stopped I tried to visit him whenever it was sunny, so bad weather wouldn't bring down my mood. It was better not to be sad when I came by. Today, though, I was incredibly happy. It was an incredibly happy day. I was so full of emotion I couldn't help but visit his gravestone. I wondered, what would Grandfather think of me? After all, I was about to marry a demon. I was about to marry the man of my dreams, and I had stopped before going to the wedding venue to talk to my grandfather. I'm pretty sure I looked odd in that cemetery, donning a wedding dress. However, I didn't really mind. I, I needed to come regardless. I stood by the grave, staring down at it with a smile. I'm getting married today, Grandpa. The wind gently danced around me, as if my grandfather ushered it to reply. I grew a brighter smile and let out a sigh. I couldn't lie. I wanted my grandfather to be at my wedding. But I couldn't go back in time. Even if I was able to, how could I have stopped him from dying? I shook my head. I didn't want to think of that. Not on the day of my wedding. I hope you'll be there in spirit, Grandpa. I'm sure you'll... Before I could continue my sentence, the sky suddenly became dark, causing me to look up. 
Rain began to fall and patter against the stone and grass as a haunting bell began to chime. What boggled my mind was the fact that the rain was avoiding my body. body. Eh. It was like I was in a safe circle underneath an invisible umbrella so the rain couldn't soak me or my dress. What the? Was this grandfather's doing? Why was it raining all of a sudden? The rain became heavy, and I didn't dare move from my spot, afraid of what would happen if I moved from it. I looked to the grave, confused and concerned. My eyes locked onto, gra onto the grave. This wasn't a natural storm. Magic was at work here. My heart gave a gentle thud in reply to my conclusion, but the word magic reverberated in my mind. Magic. I looked down and lifted my hand to scan over my gloved palms. My fingers began to tingle, almost as if the single word had unlocked something. Magic. I gently pinched the edge of one glove with two fingers and slid it off, revealing my bare hand. Nothing had changed, but I could feel that something was different. I could faintly feel energy zipping through the nerves under the skin, dancing in excitement at the word magic. I wonder. I knew Diana took away my energy and my magic before she left, but what if, what if I still had some left? I raised my hand to the sky and focused on the back of my hand. I didn't know what I was doing, but I had to see something. My mind quickly formed a word in my mind. I didn't know where it came from, but I let the word escape my lip, says the soft whisper. The Simo. As soon as the sound of the word faded into the air, the rain rounding around me suddenly froze as if time had stopped. The wind was still slightly blowing, but the rain had stopped. I slowly lowered my hand and looked around. Did I really do this? Before I could move again, the raindrops and the stormy clouds above me began to fade away, returning to the day returning the day to the sunny weather it had been before. I looked around and noticed that the grass and the gravestones were all dry, as if the rain didn't even fall in, in the first place. That was... I knew it! Oh. I knew it! That girl has demon magic! Oh man, I'm scared. What the... Then quit talking and let's take her! The Demon Lord will be so pleased. Who? Before I could turn to the search for the voices, I felt hands grab a hold of my feet, making me look down and lift my dress. Two pair of equal, two pairs of evil-looking hands had taken hold of my ankles, reaching through a dark red and purple pentagram. I shrieked, trying to pull my legs away, but couldn't stop them from swiftly pulling me into the ground. I was pulled deeper into the darkness. I was no longer in my world. I was being dragged through a dark void, one that I couldn't escape. I reached and clawed at the dark, trying to find something to grab to. I tried to pull my legs out from the grips holding them, but couldn't pull free. What was going on? Well, why was this happening? Someone help me! As if someone heard my screams, I suddenly felt the hands let go and disappear, leaving me to float in the darkness they left me in. I shut my eyes. Please let this be a dream. Please let this be a dream. I finally felt the surface warm under my feet, and I collapsed onto it, curled over my body from the experience I had. I didn't dare tear my eyes away from my lap, not ready to get up just yet. The voice I then heard, however, made my heart stop. You! What are you doing here? Diana! Um... Coming soon. Seduce me too. The Demon War. Wow. Wow. I'm excited now. Jeez, that was a good opening. Well, that was a treat. I I didn't expe expect that, but that was a good. That was a really good surprise. Um. I, okay, no more surprises now. Hopefully. Want to help make Seduce Me Too come out sooner? Find out how you can help here. I'll look that up a little later.
Wow. Wasn't that? Okay. Um, this time for sure it is goodbye. Okay. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye! And expect more Seduce Me whenever that happens. See. <laughs>